In this segment of the Family Data Webinar, we'll be going through entering a new family, a little bit on the question mark, and a brief review of the toolbar. So if you're brand new to ProCare and you come into Family Data, you'll be looking more at this type of screen, which will be completely blank. You have no accounts here on the left side. You have no families entered. And you'll click on either this plus or the plus up here. I'm going to switch to the usual screen you'll see after you enter a few families, and I'm going to go to a school where I do have some sample data. And so here I've got the names of my primary payers. The payers are the people responsible for the account, and that's usually, you know, mom and dad or family members. And they're up here in the top half. 98% of the time, that will be your parents. Sometimes this might be grandma and grandpa, but the parents will be down below as related people because they don't pay the account. So I'm going to go through entering a brand new family, and I'm going to click on the Add Account. The first thing I need to do is come up with an account key, and I'll use the first few letters of the last name. And since I'm going to enter John and Mary Smith, I'll just enter Smith. I can save, but I wouldn't have a payer, so I'm going to add a payer to the account. And I'll put Smith in, and I'll put John in. I can fill in initial date of birth or gender if I wanted to, but usually I would just do that with children. I can bring a photo in also if I wanted to. It's all optional. This is the minimal amount of information that I would need to put John in as a payer. I definitely want an email address. And for instance, on the photo, to bring that in, I can double click. And basically, I would import image. I'd browse over to where my photos are. And I could import, select the image, import it, trim it, and then have it attached to his record. Throughout ProCare, if you hit something like this and you want more detail while you're on the screen, so I'm on the photo editor screen, I click the question mark. ProCareSupport.com comes up with the nearest link. ProCare knows I'm on Photo Editor. And I double click on Photo Editor, and it opens up that one article. This article happens to have a video associated with it. Not all do. And it also has the step-by-step -step and every description that you would want in terms of bringing the photo in. And I'll close back out of that, and I'll cancel out of the photo. Identification number is optional. It doesn't, it's not needed. It's not something that ProCare uses. Comments are optional. You can put comments in about the family, that he wants to be called Jay instead of John. I'll enter one address and two phone numbers. So I'm going to click on New at the bottom. And the address defaults to the city, state, and zip that my school is set up as. And I can override it. And let's say he's at 123 West Main. And instead of Ashland, it's Medford. And we'll do a different zip code. OK. And I'm going to flag this as a mailing address. And I'm going to click Update. And it'll post here to the background. And then I could enter other addresses for him. I'm going to jump out of there. I'm going to put in multiple phone numbers. I'm going to click New on the phone number, Home. I'll put. Um, the home number in, I'm going to click update. It posts to the back here. And I'm going to put a cell also. And update. And you can continue to add multiple addresses and multiple phones. So that I don't re-enter this for the spouse or other related people, the child, I'm going to copy. So I'm going to click once on what I want, and I'm going to click copy. Let's say the phone numbers, the one that I want to keep is the home, because that'll be in common for the other payer. And I'll click Copy. So I've actually got two things on the clipboard right now. I'm going to click Continue. I've got John added. I'm now going to add another person as a payer. And I'll add Mary Smith. And she can have a different name, but I'll just do the same. Same type of thing. This is the same as for a child, except the child you'd put in the date of birth and gender, most likely. Address and phone. I don't want to re-enter them. I'm just going to paste 
and paste. These are the information segments that I copied from John's record. And I'll click continue. And I get a warning screen that you'll see in ProCare a fair amount. ProCare doesn't want you to accidentally create somebody, another record of somebody who's still in the database. So this one's a possible duplicate. I'm entering Mary Smith, and I've got a possible duplicate of John Smith. And it tells me if one of them's the person I entered, highlight their name and choose select. That means if I really intended on putting John in. But in this case, I have option two. Otherwise, highlight the new person I entered and choose save. I do truly want Mary added as a new record, and she is not up here. And I click save. I'm done with my payers. I'm going to click save and exit. So I've got an account, two payers, no children. I'll now go and add the child. So I'll click on the plus. And let's say the child has a different name. Okay. That's the child's name. For a child, I probably would fill out the rest of the info. Maybe you do photos, you bring the photo in. They probably would not have an email address, and I doubt you'd associate any identification number with them. Address you can put in. We can just paste in that same information that was in from the parents, and I'm going to click Continue. Again, I get a warning. Is this, in fact, the person I want to add, or do they exist up here? This is the one I want to add as a new person record, as a child. I'm going to click Save, and there they are. There's Steve, and his classroom and status are unknown. So status is important in ProCare because that's how you will know the enrollment status. I want to just double-click right on here, and we're going to say that he was enrolled, let's say, as of last Monday, and I can save. You can also do future enrollment statuses if you want. Again, just click on the question mark if you want more information. The next thing here, I have a child enrolled, but they are not enrolled in any classroom. So I want to set the classroom, and I'm just going to double click on unknown. These other icons also refer to unknown, and if you knew it, it was in information and relationships. You don't need to memorize that. Just double click on the word unknown. I go to information and relationships and I'm presented with this screen the first time. There's people at the top of the screen, which are the payers, but we don't know if they have a relationship to the child. Would you like to import them? 99% of the time, the answer is yes, because the payers are in fact related to the child and it's usually you know, mom and dad, or at least two people who are living with a child, or one. I'm going to click yes. There's John and Mary. I don't know the relationship that they have to that child. Maybe John is stepdad. So here we'll select mom. You'll need to flag whether they are lives with, emergency, and whether or not they can pick the child up. This is a critical box if you are going to use attendance tracker because if you want this person to ever be able to check the child in or out, you do need to flag them as a pickup. I'm also going to set the primary classroom right now because otherwise I can't use check-in to check them in automatically and ProCare wouldn't know what their classroom is. So I'm going to click on the down. We're going to put the child in a class and I'm going to save and exit. If I wanted to add another sibling, I would do that right here, and I'd add an additional child. Once I have the child entered, and I have their enrollment times, or their enrollment date, and I have their classroom, I might put in the immunizations, which is this icon right here. And I click in, and I would enter the dates of the last immunization that they had. And I'm just going to save put all these as today's dates. You'll notice that the child's immunization changed from red to pink. So they have something, some immunization upcoming, but they're not red right now. And the one that's due within 30 days, you see here's due now, is probably a 
requirement for a physical. We'll go through all of these setups in the configuration section on how you set the rules for them. So I'm going to go through a brief tour of the screen in terms of all of the shortcuts. And I just call them shortcuts. They're basically icons. So at the account level, this is to create a new account, which we went through. If you wanted to edit an existing account, you would double click on here and you could alter the parent's name, address, whatever you wanted to. The next item over is account specific reports. It's really the same as general reports, but it would only relate to this family. Removing account. I can't think of a good reason to remove an account. When you're done with a family in ProCare, the process would be the following. Let's say I've got this account. And let's say this family is leaving ProCare. The first thing I would do is I would unenroll the child. I'm going to double click and unenroller as of today. The next thing I do is make sure that I am not owed any money. And the last thing I would do is not delete the account, but I'm going here to edit account and I'm going to flag them as hide account in the account list, save, exit. And they're gone because currently my filter is set to view visible families only. If I ever need to find that family again, I can use the binoculars. I can search for a child. I can search for a payer. I can search for a certain type of relationship of a certain name, click on find, and they would show up here as a hidden family and I can then unhide them. The next icon over has to do with the family ledger. If you have family accounting, the same is true for billing boxes. Tracking, I've attached some type of a characteristic that's repeatable to this one family where I can flag A or B or C or some combo of them that's tracking. As opposed to a user defined field, which is more either open text, true, false, or something like a date. Again, we have articles on what the difference would be. Basically, tracking, you're picking from a list, and a user-defined field, you're sort of entering free text. Next item over is a log sheet, which is a note that you could attach to either the account, or more likely, you might make a log about the child. And depending on your user rights, you can have only some people in your organization view that note or not. Next is documents. Documents is a PDF. So if you had a PDF that you wanted to attach to this family, you would click on the icon for account document and you would add the PDF by saying add and you'd browse over to wherever the PDF is and it would then be attached just like these. And then if you wanted to see them in the future, you'd open it up and you could click on the PDF. That'll show up on the screen that you have. I'm gonna exit back out and go to the next icon over, which has to do with merge letters. You can set up letters for your family. I'm gonna open up an existing letter that's sort of like a mail merge that you might do in Word or something like that, and then email it out. The last icon has to do with Tuition Express, which we discuss a little bit in the family accounting webinar, which is an alternate way to collect from your families. The child has got much the same icons. You can add a child. You can reopen that child relationship box to either change the classroom or to add additional people. So maybe grandma and grandpa are pickup people or you have an emergency contact for a doctor. You would add that in the child information and relationship screen and you'd add the person down here. Child specific reports, much the same as the specific reports for the parent. Again, it would only be on this one child. Removing a child, I doubt you'd ever remove a child. Usually you'd unenroll them and then hide the family. Enrollment status, this is where you can track them and you can also enter them ahead of time if you want. You could enter that Peter is going to be gone in a few months on summer break, let's say. 
The next icon over is schedules, which we talk about in the scheduling webinar. And schedules are very useful if not only do you need to know that the child is there five days a week, but you need to know that maybe they're there only Wednesday for half a day, and that's something you need to communicate to the teacher. Along with schedules, you can do overrides and absences, and we have a full webinar on that, which is called the scheduling webinar. We've talked about immunizations. Time card is if you have the attendance tracker and you want it to keep track of the child's times in and out. If you're using family accounting, you can use the billing box to set up billing for the child. And then we have tracking, user-defined fields, log sheets, documents, just like we did for the parents. As an option to entering all of this one by one, if you did use ProCare Cloud, you could use My ProCare to have parents enter their own registration info when they first come into your center.